Alright guys, it's Anaru, and I'm back doing another Halo Reach video finally. It's been a while guys. Uh, I actually haven't uploaded a Reach video in about a week, but I haven't really played Halo at all in almost two weeks. Uh, I took a little bit of a break, I played a lot of Fallout New Vegas, and of course, uh, Friday I picked up Gears of War 3, and I basically played that all weekend and Monday. And I put up a couple of gameplays from uh, Gears of War 3, but... It uh, wasn't really too popular on my channel, but that's not really a surprise to me considering this is mainly a Halo channel. And uh, by the way guys, this was my first game back. This one that you're watching right now, the three plots on Countdown, was my first game back. So I'm a little bit rusty at first, but I get back into it. But uh, I'm going to put links to those two Gears of War 3 gameplays at the end of this video. Uh, just in case any of you guys are interested in seeing it and just for whatever reason didn't get to see whenever I first uploaded them, there will be links. But, uh, you know, nobody's forced to watch the Gears of War 3. Uh, but anyway, before we actually get into talking about the beta playlist, which I know is what everybody's wanting to hear my opinions on, I'm going to say one thing. Well, actually two things. First up is that this is actually three gameplays in one video for you guys. That's why this is video is extremely long. And uh, you might be asking yourself why I'm doing that. Well, like I said, I haven't uploaded any Halo in about a week. And uh, you know, this is sort of my way of making amends. All three of these gameplays are from the beta playlist, though. But I am giving you guys three gameplays to, you know, sort of fill up uh, the, you know, the little hole in the pit of your stomach that you guys lost from me not uploading. But anyway... Uh, the other thing that I wanted to say is I wanted to ask you guys to leave me a comment at the end of the video as to whether you think this video looks better than my previous because I am actually tweaking the saturation and the hues a little bit in this uh, video and on my computer at least it looks better uh, the, it looks a lot more colorful and things like that it, it just doesn't look as bland but I don't know how it's going to look for you guys on YouTube because a lot of the time things look really good on my computer but for whatever reason, it just seems like YouTube destroys the quality or downgrades it a little bit. So uh, leave me a comment on whether or not you guys think this looks better than my regular videos. If it does, then I'll keep using these settings. If not, then I just won't bother. Because uh, since I am adding graphics and stuff to it, it will increase the amount of render time required and the file size. But, you know, if it's worth it, it's not that big of a deal. But anyway, let's get into uh, some title update talk. Uh, as a lot of you guys know, the beta title update playlist came out today. I actually thought it was going to be two separate playlists. I thought they were going to do one for Slayer and one for Objective. But they uh, they melded it in all together. But uh, people, people have been wanting to try out pretty much everything. Because uh, I haven't really had too many problems getting an Objective game in. Which kind of surprised me because, you know, in stock reach... A, Team Objective is usually the playlist that has like the least amount of players out of them all. But uh, I was kind of surprised to see that people were actually voting for some uh, Objective. And right here guys, I'm going to be speeding up uh, a couple of different parts in these gameplays that are really slow. Because like I said, it's been about two weeks since I played and I was playing really defensive at some parts. And I know that's not very exciting for you guys to watch, so I'm going to be speeding through all those parts where I'm playing really defensive. Uh, so you guys can get to the action faster. But anyway, back to the beta playlist. Uh, I'm enjoying it so far. I mean, uh, it is good. They they mixed... Uh, like I said, I wish it was two separate playlists for like one for Slayer and uh, one for Objective. But it's not too bad. Uh, the two variants that are in it right now are Zero Bloom, Bloom Slayer, I mean, and 85% uh, Bloom. And... Of course, the Zero Bloom Slayer is exactly, well, yeah, the Zero Bloom Slayer is exactly how it sounds. It's just the, all of the Halo Reach weapons with no bloom on them, meaning you don't have to pace your shots at all on anything. You can fire as fast as you want to, and uh, you will have no accuracy penalty as long as your aim is good. But uh, the pistol in Zero Bloom Slayer, it's, uh, it's every bit as overpowered as I foresaw it to be. Uh, it, it beats everything up close, man. It outclasses everything. Uh, the DMR cannot beat the pistol at close range unless the guy that's aiming the pistol is extremely bad. I'll just I'll just put it that way. It is very overpowered. Those of you guys that have played the beta uh, playlist with Zero Bloom Slayer will know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, the pistol, now that they have bleed through, can kill in four shots. 
And uh, the problem with it is is that the, the pistol has no fire rate cap. Uh, unlike the DMR that has a maximum rate of fire, you can actually shoot the pistol as fast as you can pull the trigger. And uh, that means very, very fast kills when you only need four bullets to kill at minimum. And uh, if you've got an extremely fast trigger finger, you're going to lay somebody out in about a second. But uh, th that's the main problem with Zero Bloom Slayer. It's not as bad on maps like this, Uncaged, and... Uh, uh, let's see, what's another one? Like Asylum? It's not so bad on those maps because those are a, a lot more uh, medium range encounters. The pistol can beat the DMR at medium range, but uh, if the guy with the DMR has a very good strafe and he's really accurate, then it, it's kind of like 50-50. I would say it just kind of depends because, you know, the guy with the pistol can obviously shoot like twice as fast or more, but if his aim's not as good as the guy with the DMR, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a gray area. But the one area that I would say that the DMR absolutely does beat the pistol in Zero Bloom is at long range. I mean, you can you can get a, a pretty good four shot uh, if you're really good with the pistol, but the DMR is made for the long range combat, so I'd say about eight times out of ten the DMR will win. So in that sense, it's a little bit balanced. Um, the assault rifle is powerful, but it's not powerful enough. Uh, I mean, even with the bleed through and the no bloom, the assault rifle is just not powerful enough to compete with the pistol. Uh, at close range, the DMR versus the assault rifle with no bloom, it's actually kind of interesting. Um, I haven't really used the assault rifle, but I've had a couple of guys with the assault rifle rush me while I had a DMR at close range, and it does make for some interesting combat. Uh, and zero bloom does definitely speed up the gameplay a whole lot. Uh, that was one of the main gripes with Reach for uh, you know veteran Halo players like myself is that this game was just so slow. Uh, in pace compared to other Halo games, but I think it speeds it up too much, especially with the pistol. The pistol is broken uh, in Zero Bloom. Anyway, the pistol is broken. I think the way that they can fix the pistol would be to set a fire rate cap on it, like the DMR has, because like I said, right now it has no cap. I think if they set a cap on the uh, the pistol and maybe made the cap a little bit higher than the DMR, uh, but not. At like it is now where it's unlimited if the cap was a little bit higher on the pistol I think it would work out perfect in zero bloom because uh, you know the pistol could shoot faster than the DMR and get the faster kill at close range but at medium range and long range the DMR would probably have the upper hand and I think that would balance it that's how it's supposed to be uh, so that's how I think they would fix the zero bloom pistol if I was a developer uh, in the zero bloom playlist I would just make it have, uh, the pistol have a uh, fire cap that's that would be the change that I make uh, the 85% uh, version playlist there is no zero bloom objective uh, all objective and regular slayer matches are set to 85% variant and I actually believe the 85% variant is actually the sweet spot um, no weapon is completely overpowered uh, the pistol and the DMR are about they're about the same as they were in regular reach. Uh, you just get faster kill times because you can shoot a little bit faster. You can spam a little bit more since there's 15% less bloom. Uh, so it does speed up the gameplay, but you still do kind of need to pace for the headshot a little bit, at least at medium range, and you definitely still need to pace the DMR at longer range. But you can shoot a little bit faster than normal. And mixed with the bleed through, yeah, I think uh, it speeds up the gameplay just just enough. I think it's how Reach should have been when it was released. Uh, like I said, the 15% uh, decrease in bloom in that playlist, I believe, is the sweet spot uh, when it's coupled with bleed through, of course. Um, if there were no bleed through, then 15% would just be a little bit faster than stock reach. But with the bleed through allowing you to get four shot kills, and uh, I believe you can melee them when they have one third shield or less to get the kill, then uh, you know it's it speeds up the gameplay in my mind just enough. The pistol and the DMR are about like I said about the same as they were in stock reach because they both got the same buff. Uh, the assault rifle, the assault rifle in the 15% less bloom type playlists is, uh, I would still say it's kind of outclassed by the DMR in the pistol, but not as much so as it was in stock reach. Like it, it can compete a little bit more now. Uh, the reason why is because obviously with 15% bloom, 
in theory, it's 15% more accurate, which would mean that you're hitting it a lot more of your bullets whenever you hold the trigger down, which means taking the enemy's shields down faster, and of course, like I said, with bleed through, the assault rifle has always been a close range weapon, so the more of your bullets that are hitting when you're uh, spamming the trigger, or holding the trigger down, the faster you'll get your sh their shields to one third, so the faster you can melee and get the kill. It's not... It's nowhere near like, you know, Halo 3 status because the Halo 3 assault rifle was actually very powerful. But, um, it is, it is more of a contender now than it was in Stockreach. Uh, as far as some of the changes that they announced, there are a couple changes that I have noticed that they announced before but aren't actually in the playlist yet. It, it could be bugged or they might have changed their mind. But, um... The armor lock nerf, I'm not really feeling it because armor lock is in uh, every playlist, well, every game type in the uh, the beta playlist. And from what I read on the forums and from like reading the original posts and things, the way that it seemed that they were doing armor lock is they said it was going to be based off of your shields. And what everybody took that to mean is that if you had zero shields, like somebody made you one shot, you could not armor lock. And I get cheated right here, I think. Like, look at that. I, I obviously headshotted him twice. But that was my internet screwing me over. But um, that's how everybody took it from the way that they said that it, so being based off of your shields would base your armor lock. And everybody took that to mean that if you had half shields, you could only stay in armor lock half as long. If you had no shields, you shouldn't be able to go into armor lock at all. But I've, you know, I've shot quite a few people using the armor lock in the beta playlist. I guess a lot of the people are testing out armor lock to try to see how bad the nerf is. But I'm not really seeing any type of nerf to the armor lock so far. Um, I've shot them to one shot plenty of times and then watched them go into armor lock and get the full like seven or eight seconds or whatever it is in there. So either we took it the wrong way, they changed their mind, or maybe the armor lock is just glitched and it hasn't been uh, corrected yet. Uh, or maybe it meant something else. Maybe they meant that whenever you go into armor lock that a nade would actually lower the amount of time that they could be in armor lock. I'm not sure. Uh, a lot of the times when I run into armor lock people, even in the stock reach, if they go into armor lock, I just tend to turn around and walk away because there's no point in staying there for like 7 seconds and just waiting for them to come out because their shields will start recharging or somebody's just going to come up and kill you. Uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit later tonight I'll go back in there and next time somebody goes to armor lock, I'll see if it makes them pop out faster if I throw a nade at them. But that's one change that they announced that I haven't really seen. But this is the first day of the beta, and like it is a beta playlist, you know, there's obviously going to be some sort of glitches with the things, everything's not going to be completely balanced. That's the whole point of a beta, is to try to figure out what's wrong and change it. But um, that's just a challenge, or a change that I have not seen yet, or just doesn't feel like it's been made. The other one is that they said that melee was supposed to be set to a 75% modifier. And basically that means that the melees in Reach would work like um, the melees in MLG, the MLG playlist. And the way that it works in there is that if you just sprint up and melee somebody, they would uh, it would not take all of their shields away. It would only do 75 damage, meaning they would still have 25% shields left. So what you would had to have done was to shoot them once with a DMR or a pistol or whatever, something that does 25 damage. You would have had to hit them once and then melee, and that would pop their shield, and then you can melee the second time to get the kill. But uh, there's been a couple instances where I have run up to somebody and meleeed them while they had full shields, and they popped. Uh, I'm not seeing the 75% modifier, but like I said, it could just be glitched. It could not be implemented yet. Uh, the beta playlist, I believe, is actually staying until November 1st. And then uh, on November 1st, it goes down, and then they do whatever final tweaking needs to be done, and then it releases the full version on November 15th with Anniversary. And uh, everybody gets to play. Like, you don't have to, I don't believe you have to buy Anniversary to actually get the uh, new playlist that they're going to add. I believe you just have to have Anniversary to play the classic map playlist. Or the classic, new classic playlist, I mean, because, you know, they're, uh, they're bringing back the three-shot pistol in the classic playlist. I don't think there's going to be a DMR in that playlist. I think they're moving that, com removing that completely. But I think that's the only thing you have to have anniversary with. I believe you're going to be able to play the updated playlists uh, just, you know, by having reach. 
And um, for those of you guys that are listening to this and you don't like what you're hearing, maybe, on some of the changes, uh, none of these are actually going to be in every playlist. They're actually doing it on playlist by playlist basis. They're going to be making a zero bloom variant. They're going to be making an 85% variant. And then if there's still going to be some playlists in reach that are stock, like not changed at all. They're going it through it by playlist by playlist. So there's none of these changes are permanent. If you like reach the way it is now, it's still going to be there. But for people like me that have been around since Halo 1 and like the more classic feel, that's what these playlists are basically for. Um, let's see, what else is there? Uh, I'm sure all of you know what bleed through is by now, so there's no real reason to go over that. Oh yes, the sword. That was one of the other big changes. They were going to make it so you cannot deflect the sword unless you have another sword. Now, a lot of people are happy about this change, but I am actually not happy about this change. Uh, it, it does make it more classic, because in the other games you could not deflect the sword unless you had a sword. But in Reach, there is no way to have, at least on any of the maps currently, two swords. Uh, the only way that you can get two swords is uh, if somebody picks up one and then the host switches and it force respawns all the power weapons. That's the only way to have two swords, so there's no way to deflect at all. And uh, that was fine in the other games because, you know, in the other games, there was no sprint. That's the thing that I think 343 is overlooking with that change. There's still going to be Sprint in these updated playlists, and I've been a firm believer since Halo Reach came out that Sprint plus Sword makes it a little bit imbalanced. Just makes the sword a little bit imbalanced. And uh, now that you can't even deflect it, it's going to be even more so. Like, I've actually got a sword clip that's going to be in one of the bonus clips. I think you're going to see a lot more of what happens in that clip uh, since you can no longer block it. I think that's the big game changer, the thing that they overlooked, is that in the other games you couldn't sprint, you kind of had to be stealthy and hide around corners with the sword. Uh, in Reach, sprint plus the huge lunge on the sword is a, was a problem enough, but not being able to deflect it, I think, is going to be a problem. And uh, I think the deflection thing was done wrong anyway by Bungie, because the way that it is now, if you go on a regular playlist... If you deflect the sword, you lose your shields, but the guy with the sword only takes like 10% or 15% shield damage. I think that's completely backwards. If you're going to be able to sprint or evade plus sword, I think if the guy deflects you, then you should lose your shield and the guy that deflected you should uh, you know, get to keep most of his. I think the guy that gets deflected, if he has sprint and evade and all things like that, I think that guy should actually suffer the penalty and not the guy that actually managed to time it right. But uh, that's my little rant with the sword. I don't like that change, but you know, this place is going to be around for a month. Maybe they'll kind of notice that and uh, maybe if somebody gives some feedback on the forums, they'll change it. But uh, these are the end of the gameplays, guys. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. And uh, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this. And uh, there'll be some more Reach gameplays to come. But that's all for me right now. And you guys are going to get to see the bonus clips right now. But I will talk to every one of you guys later. Gain the lead. Double kill. Triple kill. Ah! Ah! Sword. Double kill. Triple kill. Overkill. Killing frenzy.